today I thought we would talk a little bit about uh, the new exteriors, uh, really not new, but the, the exteriors that are available in the shop. Um, so I, I did a little bit of data um, crunching and, and I, what I will do is I'll post a link below this video for the full uh, Excel sheet of, of all of my rankings and everything. But what I did was I basically took all of these different castles and I ranked them um, as far as them being either a farm-based castle, a hybrid-based castle, or an attack-based castle. Um, and I'll kind of give a brief explanation of each as I go through them um, and what their ranking was. So let's start with the Dornish tree. Uh, now the Dornish tree, as you can see here, uh, it kind of looks like a, a farming type of castle, but I actually would consider this to be a attack castle, and my reasoning for that is that it's got the spear defense, the infantry attack, the total attack, it's got army shelter capacity, it does have building speed, but I didn't think that just a 5% building speed was enough to classify it as a hybrid. Um, I'll kind of get into what some of those hybrids looked like later, but I didn't think this was good enough for that yet. So I called this to a attack castle, and uh, it, it received a, uh, a very strong ranking within my uh, total attack, or sorry, my attack uh, permanent castles. Um, I, I divided it up into, you know, it's permanent owned bonus and then it's active owned bonus. So it's it's a permanent owned bonus for the uh, attack castles is pretty good. Um, the building speed and the army shelter capacity. Um, I don't think it is great for its attack stats alone, but the building speed is a nice utility and then the army shelter capacity is a very common thing, but I do think that that 100k is worth a lot. Um, that does enable you to shelter a lot more troops. So I did think that was pretty noteworthy. Um, on the other side, its active bonus is definitely much, much stronger. Um, it's one of the top active bonus uh, buildings that I had. I had it ranked second in its active bonus, um, whereas it was just eighth in, uh, in its permanent bonus. Um, so it's second in the active bonus, and my reasoning for it being second in the active bonus is it gives total attack, it gives infantry attack, and it gives the spear defense reduction. Now, I will admit that I am not specifically an infantry castle, so I don't necessarily think that the infantry attack would be that beneficial to me, but in general, this is a very strong slate of active bonuses, and if you are an infantry-based castle, I would say all for the Dornish tree, it is a great, great buy. Um, but moving right along, we have next, we have the Shadow of Valyria. Now, the Shadow of Valyria um, is a really interesting skin here. I, I think this is probably one of the best uh, attack castles out there. Um, this one, its own bonus um, is pretty interesting. It gives a 10,000 rally size expansion and then a 10,000 reinforcement capacity. Um, this placed it as the third in the uh, attack castles category for the permanent um, owned bonus. Uh, it is important to keep in mind that I'm including some of the, uh, the hybrids in that, that ranking, but it was third between the attacks and the hybrids in terms of its owned bonus. That rally size expansion is helpful if you're a rally lead. But uh, it wasn't higher just because if you aren't necessarily a rally lead, that's not going to be very beneficial to you. You're not going to do a whole lot with it. Um, now, on the other hand, its active bonus is, is again, up there as one of the top. Um, in terms of its active bonus, uh, I, I, gave it, um, I gave it the third slot on the active bonus. Um, it has fervor attack, health, and defense all increased by 7%. That's pretty considerable, pretty solid. Um, I think it's a, it's a pretty good slate of skills. It's pretty pretty all around strong. Um, doesn't mean you have to be focused on any one troop type. The only disadvantage to this is that if you are not in fervor and you are getting attacked, it's going to give you basically no benefits. Um, that being said, I do think this is a great castle to take in to an event like uh, Alliance Conquest or Siege of Winterfell, where you you start with whatever the stats are that you go in with, and if you go in with fervor you're basically getting 7% of all your other stats. So that, that's really strong. And this is one of my top choices as far as top castles on this list. Uh, moving right along, we have the Rose Keep. Now the Rose Keep is uh, our first hybrid castle that we get to. Now the Rose Keep, um, I, I deemed this hybrid because 
it gives a siege attack reduction in its active bonus, but also the resource gathering speed, the diamond gathering speed, and the single training quantity. Um, as the own bonus here is just a 3,000 troop single training quantity, um, this is going to come in lowest on our category for the own bonus for both the attack priority um, for the hybrid castles and for the farm priority. 3,000 troops is just not worth very much. Um, now, its active bonus, on the other hand, is pretty good. Uh, on, the, on the attack castles, um, this is pretty middle of the pack. Um, I, I put it at the seventh spot, um, just because I do think the 10% siege attack reduction is pretty good. Um, when you're on defense, that's 10% you know, less total attack for the enemy. Um, is definitely a considerable bonus to you. Um, so I do think that's worth something, but it is is worth very little if you are the one attacking. So uh, that's why I kind of placed it where where it is. Um, on the other hand, for the hybrid castles, there weren't quite as many hybrid castles, um, but I did place it in the middle of the pack at three um, of the five hybrid castles. So the rows keep uh, placed there at third. Um, and then for the farm castles, I placed the rows keep at at fourth of the active uh, for the active skills of the farm castles. Um, essentially, the resource gathering, the diamond gathering is very, very helpful, very important. Um, if you are a farm castle, I think particularly the 10% diamond gathering speed is really worth a lot. Um, so that's kind of why I, I gave it the ranking there. Um, and moving next, we reach the Grand Keep. Um, this is one of my favorites. This is a really interesting um, structure here. This Grand Keep is in fact a hybrid castle. Um, I give it the hybrid designation because it has an army size buff, which is absolutely an attack based thing. But then the endurance item usage that it gives from its active skill, as well as the hospital healing speed and the hospital capacity, uh, are all kind of farmy type um, and, I, and it just provides a lot of utility. So from that perspective, I do think this is an attack based type of hybrid castle, but I didn't want to deem it as just a pure attack castle because um, it's not giving the attack stats. It's really a lot more utility, and that's why I left it in the hybrid category. Um, I don't necessarily think this is a strong farming castle. Um, as you will see, it, it's very low in those rankings, but I did think it was a, a strong castle, um, and, and I didn't think it, f it was appropriate to put it as just a pure attack. That being said, um, for its permanent skill, I gave this the top spot. This is the number one best owned skill out of all of the skins um, for attacking. Um, it gives the 10,000 army size and the 10,000 reinforcement capacity. That 10,000 army size is just worth a ton. That is a really, really big bonus. Um, it is the only, this is a unique skill to it, it is the only exterior that we have right now um, on this shop that gives 10,000 army size. So that, that's definitely big and considerable. Um, its active bonus, on the other hand, is definitely also kind of unique and interesting. It ranks a little bit lower um, in terms of the attack castles. Uh, I gave it the ninth spot um, just because I kind of feel like the, the Grand Keep, like it, it gives this awesome utility and the hospital healing speed. It's the only one that gives hospital healing speed. Um, but it's not giving me any actual attack stats. So as such, it is a little bit lower on the actives um, for attack stats. Now, for hybrid, um, I again gave it the top spot for the permanent rankings, and I gave it um, the fourth spot out, out of the five for the active rankings. Um, again, it's not giving a ton of attack stats or really farming stats. It's just a lot of utility. Um, so I didn't want to place it too high, but I do want to acknowledge that that utility is important, and I would say Grand Keep is one of the most important skins that you could buy on here. Uh, lastly, the farming category for it. Uh, it does not perform very well in the farm category. Um, I placed it uh, pretty low just because that army size buff doesn't do a whole lot for you. Um, in terms of its permanent skill, I kind of have it uh, almost tied for, for last um, with the uh, with the, the ancient capital and the crimson fort and the rose keep, which I'll, I'll get to in a minute. Um, but they're all kind of not providing a lot of utility from a farming specific perspective. So they're all kind of just there. Um, its attacks, sorry, its active skills from a farming perspective are also pretty weak. Um, it was placed in the eighth spot for the active skills there. 
Um, the, it was eighth of nine. It's one from the bottom. It, it's just not providing a whole lot of actually farm abilities. Um, the three endurance items is not nothing. And again, the hospital capacity and hospital healing does provide some utility, but this is definitely more of an attack castle than a farm castle of our hybrids. Now, the ancient capital is our next castle, and this is definitely much more of a true hybrid. So uh, you have the total health from the owned bonus, which uh, as you're, you'll find out in a moment, that is my second um, per, uh, owned bonus um, ranking for the attack castles, just because that 10% total health is huge. That is a big, big bonus. Um, and then as far as the active bonuses go, this is where the, the hybrid comes in. The training speed is definitely a farm quality, the single training quantity, farming, and the hospital capacity, um, while it's not farming, I would say it's more utility. Um, definitely a, I think again, similar to the Grand Keep in that it's a more of an attack based castle, but there is some utility provided in that rather than the just straight attack stats that we get with the traditional attack buildings. As such, it is pretty low on our attack skills, um, or sorry, our active skills for attack castles. Uh, it does come in last. Um, again, this is mostly to do with the fact that it's not up to giving any attack stats or anything to benefit uh, whatsoever in a battle. Um, and while it does give 5,000 hospital capacity, there are other things that give more hospital capacity uh, that is just not... Um, that gives more other utility, so it, it did come in last there, and that would be 11th place, um, as there were 11 combined hybrid and attack castles. Okay, we're on to our first farm-only castle. Um, oh, sorry, I should I forgot to finish with the ancient capital. Um, as far as hybrids go, it comes in second in the, the actual owned bonus, and then it comes in last in the active rankings. Um, again, I just don't think that the 5% training speed is quite enough for it to be that meaningful. Um, frankly, you can get about 25% training speed just by making another mint level 25. Uh, so as such, I just don't think that the 5% the tra the training speed or the training quantity or the hospital capacity is worth that much. Um, that being said, if you do buy the Ancient Capital, obviously you should switch to it whenever you're training troops is 5% is not nothing, but there are just other ways to get more training speed and I don't think the training speed is that essential um, at, at this point in the game. Um, that being said, if you are a big castle and you've finished all your research, then maybe this is worth more than a castle that gives research speed. So it, it really depends on where you are in the game. Anyway, moving back to the Mint Disguise, though, this is our first farming castle. Uh, so uh, I do think this is a pretty interesting one, the Mint Disguise. It does come in third in our own skills. Um, the Gold Dragon production is, is definitely a solid farm skill. Um, it's not worth nothing. Um, but it doesn't give us a second bonus, so it's just that one. Um, so it comes in at, at, at third for me. Um, as far as its active bonuses go, uh, this is a pretty strong slate of active bonuses. Um, just because of what some of the other things give, um, it does rank a little lower on our list. It ranks fifth in the active um, bonuses. Uh, the Gold Dragon capacity is definitely um, decent. Um, 300 motivation limit, that's a little bit, um, not, not a ton. Um, if you have the uh, Mountain Clan set, you're getting a lot more motivation increase than, than you're going to get from the Mint Disguise. And then the 2000 investment amount, um, definitely not nothing, but not really a ton to influence you as a farmer. That's not going to make a huge difference. Um, so it does come in a little bit lower there. I do think that when combined with its Gold Dragon's production, it is a pretty strong uh, uh, farm castle to, to get, um, or farm skin to get. Um, but it's just not quite high enough on our list, um, in my opinion, to, to make it worthwhile. Uh, so next we have the Diamond Mint Disguise. Um, I think this is basically just an improved version of the Mint, the regular Mint Disguise. Um, so this comes in a little bit lower in the, the owned bonus. Um, I do think the reinforcement capacity and the 10 minutes of speed up, not worth quite as much. Um, but the active bonus here, the 10% gathering speed for Diamonds, as well as the investment of uh, 2,500 rather than just 2,000 from the Mint Disguise, and then the 10% Gold Dragon production that you get with the active skill, or sorry, you get with the owned bonus of the Mint Disguise, makes the Diamond Mint Disguise a little bit better in terms of the actives, uh, so it was ranked third um, for the Farm Castles. And I do think that the Diamond Mine is just a, again, a better version of the Mint Disguise, and I'd recommend getting that over the Mint Disguise if you're gonna get a Farm Castle. Uh, next up, we have the Dunes Fort. 
Now the Dunes Fort is also a farm castle, and I think this one is, is almost mandatory solely for its, its active bonus. Um, it does have a pretty weak owned bonus. It comes in uh, pretty low there. Um, I gave it the fourth slot for its owned bonus, the reinforcement capacity and the building speed. The building speed, again, I mean, I think people really reach a point in the game where they're not building a whole lot. They don't need building speed, but 5% is not nothing. And if you're a new castle, that's definitely decent. And I like having a reinforcement capacity go up. Um, even as a farm castle, it's good to be able to hide your troops somewhere. Um, now, on the other hand, the active bonus. This is what's great. This is the only castle um, from this shop that gives you expedition damage increase, and it gives you 20% of it. It also gives you 20% forging speed, and it increases your expedition troop marching speed by 10%. Uh, I really think the Dunes Fort is, is a good buy, probably the most important farm castle just because of that uh, expedition damage that gets increased and the marching speed that comes with it uh, makes it really worthwhile. It does take the number one spot for our farm castles for the active bonus. Um, I know that farm castles aren't necessarily um, expedition based, but everyone should always do rebel leaders. You should always try to max those out every day. Um, and as such, this will make a difference in the damage that you do to them. And I would highly, highly recommend the Dunes for it. I think it's probably the best farm castle on here. Uh, if I scroll down to the, our bottom half, um, we start with the Crimson Fort. Um, the Crimson Fort is a hybrid castle. And my reasoning for giving it hybrid status is that this is kind of a, a, a very balanced castle. You have an own bonus that gives hospital capacity and army shelter capacity, um, which are both kind of sort of hybrid-y type of things. The active bonus is a research speed, which is definitely a farm-based talent. Endurance recovery, definitely farming. And then the last bit is the 5% total health. Uh, this is an attack stat, and I wanted to acknowledge that it is an attack stat. So that's why I kind of gave it the hybrid designation. Um, I don't think it's a truly farm castle or a truly attack castle. I think this is about as true of a neutral hybrid as there comes. Um, on the attack side, fairly weak. Uh, the own bonus is very, very weak here. Um, this came in... Uh, I gave this the, the fourth slot on the owned bonuses here um, for attack castles. Um, that sounds pretty high, but please recognize that most of the own bonuses for the attack castles are really, really bad. Um, it does give the 5,000 hospital capacity and the 100,000 army shelter. And I do think the army shelter is, is up there as one of the better things that you can get out of it. Um, I do kind of have almost a tie between uh, the Crimson Fort, Rose of High Garden, Might of Westerland, Silent uh, Prayer, and the Dornish Tree that were all that 100k um, shelter size. And then, um, just based on kind of what the other thing was, the hospital capacity, I think is better than the, the building speed um, or the research speed as this is uh, focused on attack castles and the hospital capacity gives it a little bit more of an attack type of stat. Um, now onto the active bonuses. This is just giving us 5% health essentially. Um, not the best, but definitely not worthless. Um, but I give this uh, our eighth spot on the actives for Attack castles, um, again, not bad, but just 5% total health is nothing crazy, nothing to write home about. Um, again, that's, that's half of what the owned bonus is for the ancient capital. So if you're looking for total health, um, definitely other places I would go to get it. Um, as far as our hybrids go, uh, I did give this the uh, fourth slot in our permanent rankings um, for, the, for the Crimson Fort. Um, again, most of the other higher ranked uh, hybrid castles just have some really strong um, permanent skills or uh, own skills. And the the active skills, on the other hand, I did give this the top spot as I think that 10% research speed and 10% endurance recovery is a huge, huge buff, um, a huge bonus. Um, and for a hybrid castle like this, that active bonus is also giving the utility of the health. Um, I think that's all around just a really strong hybrid active bonus. From a farming perspective, uh, this one's a little bit closer. Uh, comes in second for our active rankings because it's behind that Dunes Fort. But I do think that these are great, great farming stats. Um, and it does come in uh, kind of, again, tied for last in the permanent rankings um, with the other hybrid castles as it just doesn't provide much utility as a farm castle um, in its own bonus. Okay, moving along, we have the Twin Pillars next. So the Twin Pillars are going to be an attack castle. Um, 
Twin Pillars are giving reinforcement capacity, fortifications capacity, imp defense, cav attack, spear attack. Those are all attack based. That's why I'm giving it that attack designation. Um, as far as the the actual permanent skill or permanent or own bonus goes, uh, not a lot here. Reinforcement capacity, fortifications capacity. That's uh, nothing to write home about. Um, I give this the second to the bottom spot here. Um, so that would be the, the tenth spot on our attack castles list. Um, I do give it a higher ranking in the active skills. Um, this comes in at the sixth spot as it is a good utility on the cab and spear attack. If you're a cab spear castle, this is your probably your best bet as you're getting both of them. Um, and it is 1% more attack than if you just went for the, the uh, Shadow of Valyria, which we talked about before, which is 7% fervor attack. Um, you are getting a little more attack from cab and spear this way. Um, that being said, it is below the Shadow of Valyria and some of the others because it doesn't give any health. Um, it does give inf defense, but the perception of if you're doing this castle is that you're probably a cab spear type of castle. So that inf defense is probably not going to do a whole lot. Moving right along, we get to the Lush Forest. Uh, Lush Forest is a farm castle, as if you couldn't guess. Um, it does have a lot of nice farming talents. Um, this actually comes in second on our own skills, the wood production and resource gathering speed. Definitely good if you are trying to build a lot of wood. This Lush Forest is great. Um, the active bonus on the other hand, a uh, little bit less to be desired. Um, you get the 15% resource gathering speed, which is great. Wood capacity, wood production, all good. Um, but there are some others that I just think are overall a little bit better that give a little bit more interesting things. If you are straight just trying to produce wood, this should be your go-to. But if not, it's just not giving you quite as much because it is so specific to the wood. Um, so as such, I gave this our sixth spot in the active rankings. Um, again, I think that it's just very specific to wood. Um, I like its permanence, but I don't love the active of that. Um, it would mean you'd have to sit on that active uh, while it's producing wood, which I just don't think is, is very likely or, or very viable. That being said, the 25% resource gathering speed that you get combined with this owned and active is a lot and is very considerable, so that, that's pretty good. Um, okay, but let's move on. The Might of Westerlands. Okay, the Might of Westerlands is honestly one of the strongest castles on here. I think this is pretty much a must-buy Um it is considered a hybrid castle, and the reason for its hybrid nature is it's got this owned bonus of research speed. And if it was not that it was in an owned bonus, I would call this an attack castle. But the fact that it's an owned bonus is huge. That is a huge benefit from the research speed perspective. Um, its active bonus, on the other hand, is very attack-based, um, very clearly a spear-based castle, given the spear attack and the total attack, and the cavalry defense reduction. Um, as far as the attack castles go, um, this is going to come in at uh, pretty low for the uh, act, uh, the owned bonus. It's basically just giving us the army shelter capacity. Um, so again, very similarly to the Silent Prayer on the Dornish Tree, um, I I'm going to put it above those two because I think the research speed is a better bonus than the building speed. Um, so that's why it's going to come in at our sixth spot on the permanent or owned bonuses. Active bonus, it is going to come in at the top. This is the best active bonus I think you can get. It is obviously focused on if you are a spear castle. Um, and if you are a spear castle, I think this is the one to go for. Um, similarly, to the, I mentioned the Dornish tree. This is very similar to the Dornish tree. If you are an infantry castle, this is the best. Then the Dornish tree is the best one. If you're a spear castle, Might of the Westerlands is your go-to. Um, so it's really between those two. If you want to call it a tie, that's fine. Um, I, I have a spear castle more so than an inf castle, so I would go for the Might of Westerlands before I would go for that Dornish tree. Um, and that, that total attack is great. That's just a really helpful utility. Okay, going to the House of Falcon next. Um, I'm going to be honest, guys. I think the House of Falcon may be the worst building on here. Um, the House of Falcon is technically an attack-based castle. Um, it does have the utility of the hospital healing speed, but I didn't think it rose to the level of a hybrid castle. Um, so as far... Oh, sorry. I forgot to finish the Might of Westerlands because it is technically a hybrid castle. Uh, as far as hybrids go, um, this comes in as our third ranking for the permanent skills, as the research speed is great. Um, not quite as good as the Grand Keeper, the Ancient Capital, but 5% research speed is not nothing. And then it comes in second in our active bonuses, as it's really just attack stats. Um, and I do think that it's not quite what we're looking for as a like hybrid. Um, 
and then for the farm it, it's pretty low. Um, I did give it the top ranking for the permanent because it's giving that 5% research speed. Um, that is a huge utility as a farm castle or just a kind of castle in progress. Um, but it did get the lowest spot on the actives um, just because that, that's giving literally no farm skills whatsoever. So, sorry, anyway, going on to the House Falcon. House Falcon, like I said, probably the weakest attack castle on here. It is solely an attack castle. Um, I would recommend never buying this one. It gives bow attack for its own bonus and fortification destruction. Maybe, fortification construction. Maybe if bow attack becomes worth something, it could be good for... But for now, I just don't see it being viable. Um, there are just other castles that do a better job of what it's going for. Um, on its active side, it gives the total defense, um, which isn't bad. Hospital healing speed, which is good. And the fortifications attack bonus. Um, I just think that there are other things that give that healing speed that are better, um, like the Grand Keep. I think that you would just never buy the House of Falcon as long as the Grand Keep exists. Um, you get that same hospital healing speed and hospital capacity, um, but you also get the 10,000 army buff. And I just think that's better than the total defense. Um, you get to use that, the army buff, uh, the army size increase, um, even when you're not using this castle. Um, I don't see you using this active skin just for a 5% total defense, so I just don't think this is a viable choice. Um, as far as its rankings go, this came in ninth on the permanent or owned bonus. Bow attack, I think, is worthless. Fortification construction speed, again, very, very not helpful. Um, active bonus, I gave it 10th here. Again, just not a lot. You're basically just getting the 5% total defense. Hospital healing speed's not bad. Um, fortification attack, I mean, yeah, 20% sounds great, but it's fortification attack. That's just, it lasts for two seconds in a fight. So House Falcon would not recommend. Silent Prayer. Silent Prayer is up there. So this is a really, really strong one. I've mentioned it a couple times. Um, it is the same owned bonus as the Dornish Tree. Um, but it obviously has a pretty different active bonus, um, a very cav attack uh, heavy um, with 10% cav attack, 10% cav health, and then 7% fervor attack increased. Um, I think if you are a cav castle, the Silent Prayer is your best bet. This is probably the strongest uh, castle for cavalry castles, and it is a, a an attack-based castle. Uh, so I gave it just below the, just above the, or t really tied with the Dornish Tree for, for 7th or 8th. Um, the Silent Prayer, as far as the owned bonus goes, the active bonus, on the other hand, um, I do think the Silent Prayer is very strong. I have it just below the Shadow of Valyria. Um, because the Shadow of Valyria is any troop, this is specific to Cav. Um, I did want to give the edge to the Shadow of Valyria. But I will say that I think it is a very close bet. And if you are a cavalry castle, Silent Prayer is better. And you should just go for the Silent Prayer. Um, but moving right along to our final castle, we have the Rose of High Garden. Rose of High Garden is our final attack castle. Um, I feel pretty strongly about this being a, a attack castle. It does give the hospital capacity and the shelter size, but uh, the rest of its stats are all attack. Um, and this is kind of the, the spear version of the Silent Prayer Castle, in my opinion. Um, instead of the fervor attack, it gives total defense. Uh, I would argue that the fervor attack is probably better. Um, but Rose of High Garden is going to come in... Uh, pretty decently on, as far as our uh, own bonus goes. Again, I don't think the attack uh, castle own bonuses are typically very good. Um, the hybrid castles bring some of the best ones, but I will give this one fifth um, for the Rose of High Garden. I do like the hospital capacity that it gives, um, as well as the army shelter capacity, so it makes it decent, um, but definitely nothing to write home about. Um, on the active side of things, I placed this right below the Silent Prayer, um, as while well. the Silent Prayer was focused on Cav stats, this is focused on Spear stats, um, so it's just going to come in right below there. If you are a Spear-based castle, I would recommend the Might of Westerlands above this. Um, I don't think there's a reason to get this um, if you have the option to buy the Might of Westerlands, and I don't think it's providing enough utility otherwise to make it make a lot of sense. Um, but if you have it, it's not a bad Spear castle. Um, skin uh, does give the 10% attack and health and then the 5% total defense. Um, so it's going to come in, as I said, below si Silent Prayer at our fifth spot on the active rankings. Um, so that concludes all of the different skins that are available to be bought in this shop. Um, kind of my closing thought on all of it. 
depending on what you're going for. I think the most important ones, the Might of Westerlands is just a huge, huge buy. That one is super important. I would really encourage you to buy that one. Um, to be clear, if you're a Spear Castle, then it's just basically mandatory. Um, it's the best Spear Castle, and it's also giving you that research speed, which is huge. I would say the Crimson Fort um, is probably also a must-buy if you don't have it. Um, just from a farming perspective, uh, that, that research speed is great. And if you're not going to invest in a bunch of them, this is a great one to buy. Because uh, if you're not going to have time to get to the Might of Westerlands, maybe prioritize the Crimson Fort above it. Because you're getting 10% research speed instead of 5 um, And so maybe you decide that it's worth it to get the Crimson Fort and get that bonus. Um, and then you can still use this as a castle when you're attacking as you get the 5% total health, which is which is not insignificant. I would also say the Dunes Fort um, is, is probably pretty much mandatory for almost any castle. That expedition damage is huge. That is worth a ton um, and does make a big difference in how much damage you're going to deal to rebel leaders. So I definitely say the Dunes Fort is almost a must-buy. Um, I would also say that the, the last kind of uh, close to a must-buy to me is the Grand Keep. Um, the Grand Keep is providing army size, which again is the only one that provides army size. That is just a huge, huge bonus. Um, the hospital healing speed increased. 10% uh, isn't a ton, but it's not nothing. So I do think that it has a nice active bonus to go with its very, very good own bonus. But this has got to be the strongest own bonus out of any of these castles. Um, that 10% army size, 10,000 army size is just huge. Um, it is very similar to what the permanent skins are for uh, the, the you know very expensive paid castle skins, um, those all are giving 10,000 army size. So you should see right there just how important this Grand Keep is. Um, the last one I'm gonna mention is practically a mandatory is the Ancient Capital. The Ancient Capital gives 10% total health. This is just closely followed by the Grand Keep um, as the most uh, helpful own bonus that exists from these. 10% total health is a considerable bonus to the health and you don't even have to be using the castle to get it. It is an own bonus. That is huge. It is important to note the difference between own bonuses and the active bonuses. That own bonus always applies. And getting it with the ancient capital is great. Um, I don't think his active bonuses are fantastic, but it's the only thing that gives training speed. So, you know, when you're trying to do a training, why not slap it on there and use it, get a few runs out of it? Why not? Um, I think those are kind of the five most important ones that I would say. Uh, again, the Ancient Capital, the Grand Keep, the Dunes Fort, uh, Might of Westerlands, and then the Crimson Fort. Uh, if, you're, if you're looking for a last one to buy, I would say that the Silent Prayer for Cav Castles, the Dornish Tree um, for Spear Castles are definitely good. And then if you're kind of split between all of them, go for the Shadow of Valyria. That's going to give you a very good all-around um, all stats. So I think those are the ones I would recommend. If you are going for a farming castle, obviously, um, maybe the mint disguise, or, or sorry, the diamond mint disguise would be good for you, or maybe the rose keep, um, just because it's giving similar stats, but it's giving that hybrid nature. Um, so I think there are a couple of good options there as well. But that's going to conclude this video. I apologize for it being so long, but I hope it was beneficial to you in some way to get a review of what all these different exteriors are and which ones you should go for. Um, we just got to a new uh, set of the recruitment pass. Um, as you can see, I definitely am going for Annie primarily, but I'm going to try to finish off Raymond and uh, Layla um, just so I can get all the different ca the commanders done. Um, but that's going to conclude this episode. Uh, again, if you the way that you get to those castle skins is you need to buy the hero upgrade for 100 black diamonds. And then once you get to level 90, which I'll scroll over to, You get this little coupon that can be redeemable for any of the castles. If you have got all of the castles, um, you should purchase um, a, a castle anyway. Um, I believe that the one that everyone says is the one to get is the Silent Prayer, um, and that will still give you 75,000 diamonds in exchange, um, which is not nothing, and that is uh, would be very helpful if someone like me who is very diamond, blue diamond poor right now. So I hope this was helpful. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you guys next time.